Hello everybody and welcome to another CV Showtunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building an effect that does this. So as you can see it's a pretty overly used uh, graphics for blood but of course it works. Now we can modify these graphics to make it look better inside the future but for now this is just for the basic demonstration. So starting off, I'm going to just explain that we have a very simple script just allowing us to be able to play our um, particle system. Now if you want to add this into a trigger and all, then just make sure that you put this simple instruction on top, finding your particle system, and of course put this instruction on playing it inside your trigger. Okay, so this first thing that we're going to be covering now is explaining the top particle system and then of course we'll be going into our sub particle system afterwards so as you can see we have this name called blood splash this is going to be simply our major blood that's going to be spilling from our character and all now as you can see over here we set the duration and the start lifetime to a 0.75 I would advise setting both of these to the same duration just because it makes things a whole lot easier. You can modify these as well if you want to, but for now, that's what we're going to be doing. I set the start speed at 5. This allows it to be able to move outwards. If you want it to not go as far out, say for instance I put it at 2, then as you can see it drops at 2 instead of going so wide. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our gravity modifier. The higher you put this number, the faster the gravity effect. So if I put it at 10, we have it dropping immediately. If I put this at, say for instance, a 0.1, it's going to drop a whole lot slower. We're going to go ahead and put it at a 0.5 for now. Simulation space is really useful as well. So say for instance your character is walking in a certain direction, you want it to be set to world simulation instead of local. Local will allow this simulation space to just stay as is. It's not going to be affected by physics or anything like that. Um, excluding of course gravity. We're going to go and set that to world for now. Simulation speed, don't worry about all that. Uh, make sure that you have play on awake off. Okay, so underneath emissions, you're going to look at the rate over time, and this will set how many particle systems this is going at the same time. The less numbers you're going to be having, the less particle systems you're going to be having out. The more that you have out, the more it's going to be have out. So we're going to set this at 100 for now, because 1,000 seems a little bit too much. Okay, underneath shape, we're going to have this set to sphere. You can set it to whatever you want it to be set, but I personally found that Sphere looks the coolest. Now, of course, we have we didn't really mess with any of these other things, but uh, it's up to you if you want to start messing around with those. So we never mess with any of these here. If you are wanting to use those, then just simply tamper with them, mess around with them, and it will make a more realistic effect. Okay, underneath collisions, make sure that you have this checked off because it will allow it to land on an object and it will stay on the object instead of just falling right through it. Now for this per first particle system and all it's not necessarily needed to have a collision on it because it is just the splatter effect but for me I'm going to have collision on there just cuz. Now I set this collision to a plane so you can have it set to world if you want to. But if it's set to world, the collision is going to be affecting on everything, which includes your player. And if that was the case, our particle system would hit our player and then bounce away. And we, didn't, we don't want that. So we're just going to have it connected to planes. Next, we're going to simply add the plane that we want it to be connected to. If you want to add another object, then I'll simply press the plus button. And it will allow you to add that. But for now, we're going to take it away. Of course, you have all these information right here. Bounce is automatically going to be set at 1. I would advise setting that at 0 for this blood effect. Okay, underneath sub-emitters. Now, this is very important uh, whenever you're dealing with this stuff. Um, so, 
the first thing you want to do is choose how you want the sub emitter to work. So do you want to activate on birth, on collision, or on death? So say we wanted to activate on collision. So I press spacebar, it lands, and it doesn't activate, right? Let's activate on birth. So let's go ahead and hit that. And press spacebar, and there we go, it activates. Let's go ahead and go on death. So we're going to hit the spacebar, and of course it doesn't work. Now these you're going to have to play around with and as well. Um, I activated on birth because it's the only one that really works on uh, my individual computer for this effect. Um, but for the other ones you will have to play around a little bit more. Um, but yeah. So the particle system is going to be my blood splotch over here. Now this particle system you can add from over here if you want to by just ha creating a particle system and dragging it on there. Uh, but what I would advise doing is pressing this plus key whenever you have this uh, empty particle system right here. And it will allow you to have one automatically put inside there and you don't have to worry about uh, any form of complications. Okay, so the render. We're going to be putting this first one, or the splatter, as a billboard. So the billboard's just going to be whatever the game object's going to be. So it's a sphere, so it's going to be activated as a sphere. Uh, I set the max particle size to 0.5. You can set that or change that to whatever you want it to be. Uh, it just automatically resets the values that you had up at the top. Okay, so as you can see we have this material at the bottom. This material very simple material. Um, as you can see down here, we have BSA and BSO, um, blood splotch and blood splatch. I believe there's splatch and splotch. And all I did was simply select these two materials, change them to fade, and then take these two textures and apply the alpha is transparency. Hit apply, and then put them on my uh, materials. And it allows me to now come over to the render tab and then just change the material. Very simple, very easy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get over here into the blood splotch. This is a very, very simple thing. It's uh, pretty much the same thing as we did to the other one. All I did was simply change the duration and start lifetime to 3. Um, I did set this to looping for now. Um, if you don't want looping and all, then by all means take that off, and it will just take that off and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so yeah. And of course, we set the start size to a 0.25. Uh, you can decide whatever you want it to be. We set the gravity modifier to 1. If you, Like I said, if you want to change it to better, you can change it to 10, and it will drop a whole lot faster. Uh, maybe even set it to 100 if you want to. And yeah just like that but I think that one's good enough we also set the simulation space the world so if we're moving our character he gets hit or whatnot it's going to fall around him okay so emissions we set the emission rate to two I was experimenting earlier and for some reason when I was one it was not spawning and 10 just looked way too much as you can see so yeah, it's all up for experimentation to see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't work. I think I can get over with 1.5. Okay, so as you can notice, we don't have a shape on this. And the reason for this is because if we have a shape here, it's going to try to spawn as a shape, and we really don't want it. I mean, it doesn't really make too big of a difference because I took off uh, something at the bottom over here. But we'll get to that in a sec. Okay, collisions, I set it to planes, just like I did to the other. Um, render. So this is the part that uh, I was talking about. So if you set it as a billboard, it's going to go according to the shape. Um, if you set it to horizontal billboard, it's going to go according to the axis. So it's going to be left to right or forward backwards. Um, I guess you could say you have your forward and backwards, which is technically up and down now because it's the y-axis. Then you have your x and z-axis, which is your horizontal billboard. And there we go. Just like so, guys. 
And you have all these different options, but I would advise doing horizontal whenever you're doing a flat object on the ground. Um, we set the minimum particle size and maximum to a 0.25, and of course we added our shader onto this object. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Now if you guys have any questions about this tutorial, which I bet you got a lot, but if you have any questions, just leave it inside the comment section below. And of course, if you have a request for a tutorial and all, just uh, leave it inside the comment section below as well. I'll be happy to go make a tutorial for you guys. And uh, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe, check out some other videos, and I'll see you guys next time.